today on Denver Police News. We got another one down in here. Ever wonder what it's like to be inside of a mass casualty situation? Two casualties ready to move. We're going to take you there. We need to do this kind of training a lot more often. It's summertime, and that means bikes and pedestrians are out in force. The bicyclist has to follow all traffic rules. We'll tell you how to protect yourself and show you what happens when things go bad. When he hit her, he flew over his handlebars and he landed on his head. Finally, in appreciation of small business, whether it's a cure for a late night downtown night or just an amazing waffle, Dozens serves Denver breakfast and lunch every day of the week. Really the concept is just fresh. Hello everybody and welcome to Denver Police News. I'm Sergeant Steve Warnicky. Denver Police and several metro area law enforcement agencies, paramedics and firefighters all teamed up in conjunction with Homeland Security to practice and train for some of the worst situations that unfortunately today are all the more common. Here's a look inside of an active shooter event as first responders train on how to save lives. <laughs> this is a mass casualty situation. Grab and pull, grab and pull. Grab and pull. Help! Get them both out now. Help! Was an active shooter. Went through the door and immediately there was a casualty in the hallway. Medic up, medic up. The adrenaline started going right then and there. We got another one down in here. We got a guy with a device over here on the floor. Hey! Set up into two separate teams of police officers with three EMS personnel each. Move in, move in, move in. It was our job to start doing a search and rescue. All right, tourniquet. Collecting casualties. New casualties ready to move. We were clearing rooms along the way. Keep a hand on him. Stay down. There was mass casualties in an ICU. I need a medic when I can. Possible suspect with a gunshot wound. Medic up! Yeah, medic up! We started getting the walking wounded out as quick as possible. We're good. We're good. We're going out. As soon as everybody was cleared out, it's all clear. We formed up again and headed back out. Coming out! Some of the best training ever. We are at the old University Hospital complex. This particular building has a lot of different floor plans and they replicate very well the kind of building that first responders might end up in an active shooter type environment. For this exercise, we're gonna assume shots fired, parties down. In an active shooter situation, <laughs> the officer's sole focus is on neutralizing that threat. Protecting lives is the number one priority. It was really crazy because they actually came out with rifles or ammunition. The police! Can you crawl to me? And actual bombs. I really didn't expect that. I can walk, I can walk, I can walk. I can walk, I can walk. What we're trying to do is really test their limits. Please help me! Help me! We want to make sure that they stop the killing spree. <laughs> At the same time, <laughs> we want our officers, our EMS, and our fire personnel to enter these dangerous situations, these hot zones, and extract injured parties as quickly as possible and save lives. There's no fire EMS law enforcement, okay? Everybody here is going to be responsible for taking care of these victims. Do something, you know, if you got three officers in a room and you're all standing there <laughs> watching blood pumping out and everybody's going, where's the firefighters? You got three minutes till they're dead, so. My role is I'm a guy who got a shotgun shell to the back. The makeup was such that when I saw the wound, I panicked, knowing it was makeup and an actor. <laughs> We're providing some special effects makeup. We've got some lacerations, some bullet wounds, alcohol pigments, latex, blood, blood, more blood, a severed finger that we haven't found a use for yet today. We're going to be placing a kind of small flesh wound on his cheek. It looks like it's gonna sit pretty nice right around here. More adhesive to kind of help seal the edge and in theory keep it from popping up. Next we're gonna do a little painting with the alcohol pigment. Make it more um, dramatic. Then I'm gonna grab some blood gel. That's gonna make it look disgusting. Close your eyes for me please. You're all set. <laughs> We do a lot of horror movies and things like that where it's all in good fun, but knowing that these guys are training for a real life situation is kind of sad. Police, can you come to the sound of our voice? You see a lot of mistakes. I mean, there's a lot of mistakes, but that's good because you remember those. Do we have any more medics coming? I think the biggest mistake that uh, our team made, we spread ourselves way too thin, too fast. We've got three more victims in here. Got to a point where we were outside of a room of casualties. 
without paramedics and and be stalled. Help me! Do something! We have one here that's still bleeding. Help! We have one here. No pulse. Can you hear me? No pulse. No pulse. Once we got on the other side of that door, it was like, God, I wish we didn't wait. We got three people who have to wait five, ten minutes for a tourniquet to get put on. We're dragging out dead bodies. <laughs> you can see the arterial bleeding, and it wasn't going to stop until you did the right first aid, so we shouldn't have stalled. We should have went in there right away and did what we could have done. That's going to be one of the lessons that I've learned out of today. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! The exercise is critically important. Do we clear the right? To bring 50 different agencies from across the metro area together. To wrap around? Really, this is about preparedness. Jones. Leclerc. You have to. With you. Get the training. Go. And then practice that training. There's a device inside of room 378. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. We got a hostage situation here. When it does happen. So this one. If you're not even somewhat prepared. Police. Step out. Step out. Step out. It's really going to be a soup sandwich for you, so. Step out. If we don't do this more often, nobody's going to kill you if you do what you're told. We're going to lose those skills that we get taught. Hands. This is the stuff that you remember. Go to, Go to the ground. Go to the ground. We need to do this kind of training a lot more often. Yo, medic out. All right, let's go, guys. I got you with. In a scenario, in a scenario. This day was paid for by a grant from the Department of Homeland Security. Amazing training. It's possible bicycle riders can be just as dangerous and reckless as car drivers. Today, we find out not only that bicycles have to obey all the same laws as drivers, but we also see the dangerous consequences when they don't. Jeff, tell me about what happened on Friday here. I was traveling southbound on Broadway. I was in the farthest left lane. I caught movement out of the peripheral vision of my eye and I saw a bicycle go between myself and another car. He swung out and made a left turn. The crosswalk was full of people and uh, he hit this young lady. When he hit her, he flew over his handlebars and he landed on his head. He was not wearing a helmet, so uh, you could tell that hurt a little bit. So I pulled over and immediately contacted the young lady that he hit and asked her if she was okay. She said she wasn't hurt. She actually kind of thought it was her fault. But then I told her, well, you're in the crosswalk. The light to cross was on. You're perfectly fine. A lot of people may not know. Is the bicyclist at fault here? The bicyclist has to follow all traffic rules, which would be yielding to a pedestrian in the crosswalk. I did cite him for a bicyclist failing to obey all traffic laws since he did not have the right of way and he ran into the young lady. So we've talked about the responsibilities of bicyclists out here that they have to obey all traffic laws, but what about pedestrians? What are their responsibilities? Pedestrians have to cross at the crosswalk and they have to obey the crosswalk signals. If there is no signal there, they still have to cross within the crosswalk. The laws are designed for the safety of the people. And if you're following the rules, you should be okay. Scary video. Please be safe this summer. And finally, small business is a huge focus for Mayor Michael Hancock. Dozens has been serving breakfast and lunch in Denver for years. Let's take a look at some of the delicious meals they serve up on a daily basis right across from police headquarters at 13th and Cherokee. Dozens was started in the 80s in a historic 1884 house. I bought Dozens from the original owners eight years ago. But Dozens has been here 29 years. And really the concept is just fresh. Do things to order and to serve foods that aren't canned or processed. Belgian waffles, fully loaded. Whipped cream and strawberries, you just can't really go wrong with it. The steamboat, cheddar cheese, bacon, scrambled eggs, sour cream, the nada omelet, which is really hearty, chili and cheese and sunny side up eggs on top. Man, I fly by the seat of my pants. I kind of go on gut and intuition on what I'm gonna order. Today's the waffle. This is the golden triangle. It's certainly comforting knowing that we're in a community where these same tens of thousands of people are here Monday through Friday doing their jobs. Whether it be at the police department or at the city and county building. You see the same people, they know your name, you know their name. I always see the same people in here and, and we love them. Dozens has been here almost 30 years. We probably got 30 more in us. Well, I definitely recommend the steamboat. Thanks everybody for watching Denver Police News. I'm Sergeant Steve Warnicke. Stay safe out there. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.